This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets. Get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. And our first guest today is Jay Whitehead, CEO of League Network, the new sports fundraising leader. Welcome to the show, Jay. Okay. Good morning. So I want to tell our guest today a little bit about LeagueNetwork.com. It's a media and fundraising platform for 41,000 youth team sports tournaments, leagues, and clubs throughout North America. League Network is Jay's 17th startup. He says he's just an entrepreneur with a running problem, as he's also finished 72 marathons. That's ridiculous. 72 marathons? A That's little bit obsessive. More than I want to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, you, you know, once you get started, you realize you it's it's really embarrassing to not finish. Oh my God, I've done two. I just did Boston for the first time this year. Oh, have you done Boston? Wow. I have twice, so you had to qualify. That's that's a re- remarkable, Stacy. Congratulations. No, a, I I did not qualify. I ran with a um, with a charity. Definitely would oh. not qualify for a marathon. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's a you know the marathon is a uh, is an acquired taste, and mm-hmm. uh, for those of us who have acquired a taste for it, it's quite nice. So the story behind why I'm why I run so many marathons is that I was once reading uh, Forbes magazine and Runner's World in the same day. And uh, mm-hmm. Forbes magazine said that there were, uh, there were uh, t- uh, 1,200 billionaires in the world. And Runner's mm-hmm. World said there were 120 people who have ever run 100 marathons. So I figured there are 10 times more billionaires than there are people who've run 100 marathons. And I figured you have to be pretty lucky to be a billionaire. But I figured I could probably run 100 marathons. So that's why I set the goal at that wow. time. That was back in ni- 1994. And, and I'm still at it uh, at uh, the young age of 58. And hopefully... Uh, even though gravity is not our friend, we will finish mm-hmm. that goal. Wow. That Excellent. is awesome. I do have more questions on that, but first I want to get to this newest startup, your 17th, LeagueNetwork.com. Tell us what problem it solves and what kind of business it is. My wife has, for the last 15 years, run uh, one of the largest youth leagues in New Jersey, several thousand kids, six sports For 15 years, she's done that, and she realized there's no single place for people who run youth leagues to go to figure out best practices, to learn best practices, nor to raise money. Um, Mm -hmm. And so she, since she and I have started a bunch of businesses together in media and IT and fundraising, we thought that we could do this better. And so we set out to to solve the problem of giving league, team, tournament, and club leaders uh, best practices and to help them raise money. Turns out, we didn't know it at the time, but turns out that youth sports in America is one of the fastest growing markets. It's a $15 billion segment. Time Magazine's September 4th issue had a, uh, a cover story uh, called Why Kids Sports Became a $15 Billion Industry. And uh, HBO's Real Sports has done a big segment on it. It's a gigantic and fast-growing industry. It's supposed to grow to $41 billion by 2023, fueled by sports tourism and travel sports. So little did we wow. know that we were on the front of a wave and our uh, fundraising platform has taken off uh, and so is, our media, uh, so is our media business. So that's the problem we solve and that's how we solve it. Um, we are, our, crowd, our crowdfunding platform a league growth mm-hmm. assisted fundraising, leaguegrowth.com assisted fundraising is a lot like GoFundMe, except mm-hmm. that it's not self-service. GoFundMe is self-service, and 76% mm-hmm. of GoFundMe campaigns fail to raise a penny because it's mm-hmm. hard. So mm-hmm. our secret sauce is we run the campaigns for you. That's it. Wow. And we, wow, we succeed. So interesting. 94% of our campaigns succeed. And 76% of GoFundMe campaigns fail. So that's the difference. Wow. And it seems like you're, you're kind of evening the playing field. One of the things I worry about when it comes to youth sports is not everybody can play because of the fundraising issue. And you're opening the doors, I would imagine, to more potential for 
more kids to get involved. Right. Overall, um, there are 32 million youth sports athletes in, the, in this country. That number wow. falls by about 500,000 a year. Um, hmm. And a lot of it has to do with uh, the fact that, that youth sports has become pay to play. And those kids on the lower end of the income spectrum actually can't mm-hmm. pay, so therefore they can't play. So right. hopefully this will go some way toward helping them play. Um, and in the meantime, it will also help the others who are having trouble um, having trouble making the ends meet as well. It turns out that about 20% of teams never have to raise money uh, because mm-hmm. they're in wealthy areas. Um, uh, but the 80% who do really need help. And they mm-hmm. really hate car washes, raffles, and uh, holding an empty coffee can at Dunkin' Donuts. Mm-hmm. Wow. Not a fun way to what's spend interesting, I know. Yeah. And what's interesting about this startup is that you have some interesting investors, such as NFL Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott. How did you right. make that happen? Well, so um, th- uh, there are a lot of pro athletes who are angel investors. Um, Mm -hmm. and they gravitate toward this stuff that they understand, right? And there's no pro athlete on this planet who has not had to raise money um, sometime Mm -hmm. during their youth days. And Ronnie rose to that message because he's very active in youth sports and uh, and also has been a very, very successful Silicon Valley investor, probably the most uh, successful Silicon Valley investors among uh, uh, former pro athletes. And, um, and so he rose to it, as did a number of other angel investors and venture capitalists. Um, we, most of our companies have been backed by angel investors and venture capitalists. So we, um, we've, um, we've had some great support over time, and we'll get more. Uh, people, are, people are jumping on as we speak. Wow. What about are you seeing in youth sports in general? We're, we're in New England, and there's so much covered – with like Aaron Hernandez, who was a Patriots player who was indicted on murder, et cetera. And a right. lot of it they're saying has to do with like concussions in sports. Are you seeing an exodus from like tackle football and stuff like that because of the big concern over concussions today? Right. The three big trends in, in youth sports are number one, um, the, the, the move toward travel teams, uh, the better athletes or the kids who are more involved want to play what's called travel sports, which are mm-hmm. a little bit more competitive, more expensive. Um, generally, the seasons are a little longer and they're a little bit more fun. So that's, uh, that's the number one trend is, is travel sports. And, um, and, and that's generated a whole industry called sports tourism. So now there are um, over $9 billion worth of sports tourism facilities built around the country and some mm-hmm. like Walt Disney, Wild World of Sports, uh, Spooky Nook, Rocky Top, all these gigantic facilities, um, and that's part of the sports tourism industry. So that's, that, that's part of the travel sports thing. The second thing, uh, the second big trend is specialization. A lot more kids are being asked to specialize a lot earlier. Uh, in fact, there, there are sites out there that, um, that are recruiting and ranking middle school players. Uh, mm-hmm. as early as middle school, like eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds. Um, so um, that trend towards specialization is causing kids to specialize earlier in, in sports, which is um, leading to the third trend, which is a little bit more uh, repetitive, repetitive injuries. So more injuries right. are happening. Uh, the concussion thing is just the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot more repetitive injuries happening because of specialization. So there's a, there's a whole... Um, a whole school of thought and training around uh, kids starting to, to returning to multiple sport play so that they mm-hmm. train other muscles and don't fatigue themselves. For example, there's pitch count limits in baseball. There's um, no tackle in, in, ta- in uh, football practices uh, in many youth leagues. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there's no heading the ball in girls soccer up to the high school level. Now, um, and so, uh, and then uh, girls, in, girls who play lacrosse now have to wear helmets, whereas in the past they did not. So there's a lot more um, uh, protection of athletes as a result of, uh, a result of uh, heightened awareness around injuries. So those are the three big trends. Wow. So tell me logistically how it works. Who would go on, who would be your customer that would contact you? And then 
who are they crowdfunding from? It must be the local communities. Is that true? Well, so, yeah, so um, leaguegrowth.com assisted fundraising works is a three-party system. So it's a mm-hmm. optimized for youth sports. So the three parties to the transaction, the coach, the player's mm-hmm. parent, and the player's parent's friends. So the coach turns over the roster of the team mm-hmm. and the player's parents' emails because we never we, we can't touch uh, kids via email under 13. There's a law against that. It's mm-hmm. called the COPA laws. So uh, mm-hmm. the player's parents, then uh, we, get, we get them an email. And we say, add 10 friends. So they add the emails of 10 friends, family, or fans. Uh, and so if you've got a, a baseball team that has 15 players on it, uh, each one of those parents has 10 friends. That's 150 people plus the parents. That's 165 people. And then we send five emails over 25 days out to those parents. And we hit up their social media as well. And we raise the money. So for a baseball team, the average raise is about $2,500. And we mm-hmm. raise that in 25 days. So we say wow. that, uh, that league growth assisted fundraising is the fastest way, fastest way to, 25, to $2,500 in 25 days. $2,500 in 25 days. That's our standard. Wow. It sounds amazing because I know when I was growing up, like to raise money, we used to like sell candy bars and go knock on doors. Today that's a little bit taboo that nobody would let their kid go knock on strangers' doors to sell candy bars. or So it seems like all the alternative fundraising or many of the alternative fundraising methods are going away. And this is such a much easier way of reaching out to a handful of people in the community connected to those families to ask for help. Right. That's awesome. Crowdfunding, yeah, you're right, Stacey. Crowdfunding is uh, the biggest innovation in raising money in our lifetimes. Um, mm-hmm. look, at, look at some of the disaster relief fundraising that went on. J.J. Watt from the Houston right. Texans raised $37 million for hurricane relief. So it really works mm-hmm. well for disaster relief. Um, those big platforms like GoFundMe are not really good for team sports, though. They're not optimized right. for team sports. So that's, we, we're just focusing on this need in team sports uh, and uh, optimizing everything we do uh, to get better at raising money for those teams that need it. The, the, the size of the fundraising marketplace, so we, 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 I told you that this is a $15 billion market. That's how much parents spend all together. The, the amount of that, of that $15 billion, the amount that has to be fundraised is $3 billion mm-hmm. a year. $3 wow. billion a year. Wow. So, we're, tr- we're trying to fill a $3 billion hole, mm-hmm. $25 at a time, uh, wow. via, via a league growth assisted fundraising. Uh, we'll do um, somewhere over $20 million in fundraising in 2018. Um, we're slotted to go to about $50 million or more in 2019, and hopefully we can head $100 million by 2020. Wow, amazing. Tell us about an upcoming conference that you have. With a yeah, thousand so, um, youth tournament and league leaders, right? So, so um, all these league leaders, there's no place for them to get together. The tournament mm-hmm. league and club leaders, or the what we call the TLCs, tournaments, leagues, and clubs. Um, there are that's the that's the group that's driving this. What we call the TLC revolution, this 15 billion dollar mega trend. Uh, so we we built something called the TLC Sport Summit, which you can see at TLC Sport Summit. Dot com uh, mm-hmm. and it runs December 11th at Ripken Stadium in beautiful Aberdeen, Maryland. Cap, Cal Ripken Jr., wow. the uh, Major League Baseball Hall of Famer, is our keynote speaker. We'll, we'll have um, several hundred people at that event uh, wow. in uh, Aberdeen, Maryland, and it'll be a one-day master clinic for people who run tournaments, leagues, and clubs. And, of course, one of the things we'll teach them is how to use leaguegrowth.com assisted fundraising. But more than that, they ha- they're learning best practices around the board, whether it's technology or insurance or background checking or recruiting volunteers or training coaches or, um, or equipping the team with, with equipment or uniforms, uh, uh, fundraising, of course, and, um, and a lot of other skills uh, as well. Uh, and then there's all these people who've never met each other. So the volleyball guys never talk to the baseball guys, who never talk to the soccer, soccer guys, yeah. who never talk to the basketball guys. So we'll have people representing 30 team sports at that event. I'll bet you guys couldn't even name 30 team sports. Right. 
That's amazing. Hi, so we're, yeah, so 30 mm. team sports. So all those people are going to meet each other for the first time. The baseball guy is meeting the, you know, the biggest baseball yes. tournament guy has never met the biggest volleyball tournament guy who's never met the biggest um, person who runs the biggest basketball tournament, who never, right. who's never met the person who, re- who who's run the, the biggest rugby tournament. All those people are going to meet each other at the TLC Sport Summit, December 11th in Maryland. And wow. we'll, have a bunch of them, well, we'll have a bunch of them next year. We'll have uh, at least two of these next year uh, around the country, maybe as many as three, um, because uh, these coaches, tournament leaders, and league leaders don't travel very far. They're not like corporate executives. They don't have big travel budgets. They can drive three hours, but they can't fly three hours. So wow. we have to bring, the, bring to the event to them. So our time is about up. For anybody listening, I, I imagine that it's not difficult to find customers because – Anybody in league sports is looking for new ways to fundraise. For anybody listening, uh, how can people find out more about League Network and get involved? You can always go to leaguenetwork.com, or if you want to learn more about the fundraising, go to leaguegrowth.com, L-E-A-G-U-E-G-R-O-T-H.com, leaguegrowth.com. That's our assisted fundraising site. And if you want to know more about the the event, the TLC Sports Summit, you go to tlcsportsummit.com. And you can see the roster there. And that's how you find out, Stacey. Wow, thank you so much. That was Jay Whitehead, CEO of, and co-founder of LeagueNetwork.com. Thank you so much for joining us, Jay. Thanks, Stacey. Thank Thanks, you, Bob. Jay. Talk to you later. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this. <laughs> 